are watching Gears. Hey, welcome to Gears. <laughs> Man, have I got a surprise for you. You know, the cool thing about doing a show like this is we get to deal with every aspect of the gearhead world. Cars, trucks, motorcycles, whatever. The problem is, a lot of people think you gotta spend a lot of money before you can build something cool and have fun. And I'm telling you, that's just not the case. So, to prove that point, every once in a while I like to roll in what I call an alternative project. Now this is your, your go-karts and your quads and your snowmobiles and your old tractors. I mean, anything that's not a car or a truck. And the reason is, a lot of people are working on these kind of projects because you can find them anywhere, they're easier, they're cheaper than doing a car or a truck, and they are a great training ground to show you how to build stuff. Now, with all that being said, you've got to be wondering, what the heck did I just roll in here? I mean, is this a boat? Is it a, a tank? Is it a roller coaster car? What the heck? And the answer is, well, yeah. This is called a SureTrek. This is something that I picked up on eBay for a few hundred bucks, and it's a great example of an early 70s ATV. And <laughs> they were doing some wild stuff in the 70s. Now the SureTrek was pretty unique because it featured eight wheel drive with the high low range forward and reverse to go with that. It also was fully amphibious with a very unique steering system. Okay, the bad news is the engine that we got with this thing has got some problems. Now it's a 300cc two stroke snowmobile engine, but as you can see, it definitely needs a rebuild. Now, of course, we could rebuild it, but the problem is this engine is missing a lot of stuff. There's no exhaust, the electrical system's all hacked up, the fuel system's gone, the shrouding's gone. Uh, it would be real expensive to bring this engine back to life the way it should be. And then, when you did it, you're looking at about 20 horsepower, which just, <laughs> that ain't gonna get it. We might as well make it a hot rod while we're doing it, right? Right, so what I did, is go out and buy a 70s Polaris snowmobile for 50 bucks. Now, the reason I did that is that the Polaris is packing a 400 twin with twin Makunis and about 40 horsepower. <laughs> Man, this thing is gonna rock. There's a huge difference between this and this. And that's the cool thing about these kind of projects. You can put whatever you want in that project. You can put a motorcycle engine, a snowmobile engine, heck, a Briggs and Stratton lawnmower engine. Whatever you got, you can put it in there. It's just up to you to make it work. And that's the fun of these kind of projects. Now, remember, whatever you use, you have to get the whole system. Notice I don't just have an engine here. I've got the whole wiring harness, the engine, the whole drivetrain, the fuel system, the motor mounts, because you don't know what you're gonna have to use. Also, don't forget the most important part, the VIN tag off of the donor vehicle. This has got the manufacturer date, the serial number, the model number. With this, I can order whatever replacement parts that I might need, so everything will still be serviceable. If you don't have that, you're back to this. Good luck. So now all we have to do is take that and put it in that. There's something to hold on to. It's like a booger on your finger. <clears throat> The first thing you need to do is position the engine. Now, fortunately, we still have the original engine mounting plate there. It looks like Swiss cheese, but <laughs> hopefully we'll still be able to use it. The big key here, though, is to line up the pulleys of your torque converter, the clutch with the transmission. There we go. A piece of flat stock in the bottom pulley is a great way to keep things lined up. Now it's just a matter of drilling and grinding and cutting make sure everything fits. All right, the engine is in place. And we obviously have a problem here. This 400 is big and heavy. 
And this stock rubber mount down here under the transmission is going to allow this engine to rock way too much. And what that's going to do is cause some misalignment problems down here on the drive chains, which is not good. So we are going to have to stop that from happening. So what I'm going to do is build an outrigger arm that's going to go from this motor plate and over here to the body and mount with the rubber motor mount. Now what this will do is allow the engine to still move and vibrate, but not rock side to side. And there it is, all mounted, nice and solid. And that means the first hurdle is out of the way. <laughs> Welcome back to Gears, where we're taking an old clapped out 70s ATV called a SureTrek and we're bringing it back to life by stuffing in a hot 400 engine out of a wrecked snow machine. The purpose? To show that it's possible to build cool stuff and not spend a fortune. As you can see, I've got the motor back out and I'm going through it, getting it ready to run because keep in mind, this engine sat for about 30 years. so It's gonna be gummed up no matter how clean it might look. And it's a really good idea to rebuild the carburetors, go through the fuel pump, and go through the electrical system so the thing is ready to run when you start pulling on that cord. Now, the kits for these Makunis are really easy to put in and they're really cheap. They're only about 10 bucks. So guys, this is something that you can afford to do. And it is really important to do it because you'll never get the motor tuned and running right if you don't rebuild the carburetor. Okay, with the engine ready to go, it's time to turn our attention to the body of this thing. You ready to do this, Craig? Let's go for it. All right. Oh, it's heavier than it looks. All right, thank you. No problem. <laughs> oh, man, we got a problem here. This thing is, it's supposed to float, but with this big old hole here, shoot, we might as well just write Titanic on the side because she's going to go straight to the bottom. Look at this. It's also busted in the same place on this back car. Now obviously this is a very high stress area right here under these sprockets. So to fix this, I'm going to go ahead and build a metal plate that will bridge this gap and then I'll fiberglass over the top of that to seal it all back in and make it waterproof again. Once your patch is made, mix up your resin and put it on. Now follow that with three or four strips of fiberglass mat and a lot more resin. Just keep going. Now the idea here is to smooth this all out and get rid of the air bubbles so you get a strong waterproof bond to the original fiberglass. With the holes all patched up, We'll go around the axles with some fresh silicone to keep water from seeping in around those. Now, with everything sealed up, hopefully seaworthy, and the engine back in place, it's time to deal with the exhaust system. And that, of course, is going to have to be custom made. Now, I know you're thinking, well, <laughs> wait a minute. So I need a tubing bender? No, no, you can do this. All you have to do, go down to your local auto parts store, pick up some pipe and adapters and clamps and hangers and a muffler and you are ready to go to work. With the head pipe all fabricated and mounted in place, 
We're gonna finish it up by tucking the muffler up underneath, out of the way, behind the tires here. Now this is gonna do wonders to help quiet down that old noisy two-stroke. Now for the gas tank, well, we really lucked out. Because even though the original tank is long gone, the tank that came with the Polaris snowmobile is not only full of 1975 gasoline, which was only 35 cents a gallon, but it's also gonna slide right into place with just some minor modifications right here beside the engine. That is why it is so important to get everything you can off of the donor vehicle. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna use that old rancid gas. Make sure that you are cleaning and purging an old tank before you reuse it. Now, the final step, <laughs> is to hook up your wiring and your cables. Now please, please, please do not reuse your old nasty wiring or your cables or your hoses. <laughs> Spend a few bucks here and get some new stuff because it's cheap insurance and you can pick it up at almost any motorcycle or ATV place. All right, we are right at that magic moment of every project because we're just about ready to try to start this thing that we've created. Now, I know you're gonna be excited and you're gonna be sweating and you're not gonna be thinking straight and stop. I've got a real important point to make here. You got to know the specs of your engine, whatever you've put in there. Remember, this is a two-stroke, which means I have to mix the gas and the oil. And about the only way you can tear up a two-stroke is to run it lean. So, very important here to, first of all, use a quality oil. I'm using this semi-synthetic from Lucas, and then I'm gonna run it just a little rich. Now, I realize that's gonna make it smoke a little more, but having that extra lubrication is really important when you're bringing back an engine that's sat for a long time. Here we go. sounds awesome. Now we're going to show you what it'll do after we do something with those old nasty tires. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Gears. Now if you're just getting here, well shame on you because you have missed a bunch. Because we've taken an old discarded ATV that was left for dead and we brought it back to life using an engine from a snowmobile that was also put out to pasture about 30 years ago. Now, so far we've been able to do this project on a very reasonable budget, just spending money wisely where we needed it. However, there is one more area where we need to spend some money and get something good, and that is tires, because this junk that's on here is not going to take us anywhere. Now, since this is an all-terrain vehicle, needs to be able to go anywhere, including water, well, there's really only one choice when it came to tires, and that's these incredibly gnarly vampires from Interco Tire. And you guys that race quads know just how bad these boys are. Come here, take a look at this. They've got very deep, very aggressive Chevron-style lugs that are going to give me incredible traction in mud and sand and rocks, whatever. Also. When I get them in the water, these are gonna act like huge paddles. And that is what makes a vehicle like this move in the water. A knobby tire, like what's on there, is just gonna cause it to bob around like a cork because they don't have this directional style tread. So, those are history. On go the vampires. The first thing I wanted to do, once we got it all unloaded and I got myself packed inside the thing, was to just slowly drive the rig around a little bit and familiarize myself with the uniqueness of this vehicle. Well, okay, maybe I overlooked the slow part. <laughs> <laughs> that runs awesome! One thing I found out very quickly was the steering was like nothing I had ever experienced. You have to start turning way early and a tight turn is something that will never happen in a sure trek. 
probably one of the main reasons these things were not very popular back in the day. Fortunately, this vehicle has reverse, so you can back out of tight spots if you need to. Without it, this thing would be a nightmare to move around. However, with the eight-wheel drive and the gnarly tires and the low range, the SureTrek carries with it a certain tank-like factor that makes it almost unstoppable. <laughs> we'll get more into that a little later. You know, this is why they call them all-terrain vehicles, because they will take everything with them, including the farmer's fence. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I figured it was probably a good idea to see if this thing was actually going to float before I really started banging it around and possibly punch another big hole in the bottom. So with our fingers crossed that I hadn't overlooked any holes, into the lake we went. Now considering that just a little while ago, this thing had a hole in it big enough to sink a battleship, it not only floated extremely well, but I was amazed at just how high in the water it sat. I mean, I almost didn't need the exhaust extension. However, you can see how important it was to silicone all the axles and access panels because they're all underwater. Hey! Now, just as it was designed to do, the tires actually move this thing in the water, and I'm only running at partial throttle. Steering this thing in the water is similar to what it is on land, except it's even worse. Once again, you need to put a lot of forethought into where you want to go. But even then, you better be ready to use a little swamp water persuasion to help you get going in the right direction. But that's okay, because this thing wasn't designed to be a boat. It's an ATV. It's designed to take you places. And I have never seen a boat or a quad do this. And that's cool. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are driving the Sure Trek. Now, if you're just getting here and don't know what this is, check it out. The Sure Trek is an amphibious ATV from the early 70s. And this one led a rough life. But with a little bit of time, some leftover parts, and a little bit of money, you can bring something like this back to life. So how does it run? It runs awesome. Well, we know two things. It floats. It's strong, but not invincible. The good news is we've got double the horsepower. The bad news is we found out why all the fiberglass is broken on this thing. You got some weak chains. Look at this. It snapped the chain in the front, just split that thing apart, and broke the chain in the back at exactly the same time. Look at that. So we got a strength issue here, which we'll take care of, and we'll get back out here. So with brand new, stronger chains in place, and the sure trek rumbling along like a small tank, it's time to really lean on this thing and see what she'll do with all that extra power. Of course, that question was answered very quickly when we opened up that 400cc two-stroke and it quickly pushed that old lumbering eight-wheeler to speeds that it and its designers never intended it to run. Man, is this cool or what? Come on over here. I got something to show you that'll help you with your project. Now, most of you guys are familiar with the project planning book. It's a great way to keep track of your project, the things you've done to it, keep it on budget, and that kind of thing. But one thing the planning book didn't have is a way for you to keep receipts with all of your information on your vehicle. So we have come out with the deluxe project planning book. Now this has got all the same guts as the original book, but as you can see after each section, there's a plastic little container here for you to keep the receipts. So the brakes, receipts for your brakes, there they are. The glass and weather stripping receipts right there. 
This is a great way to keep it all together. Also, we talked to a whole bunch of insurance companies. Man, they're loving this thing because it allows them to do a nice appraisal on a classic vehicle and do a claim on a classic vehicle if they need to do some, some replacements or some repairs or that kind of thing on it. So this can really come in handy down the road, not just building the vehicle. With the high speed runs out of the way, we headed off to some rough, rocky, wet terrain to see if this really is an all-terrain vehicle and if it is possible to get it stuck. Down in the creek, it became real apparent that sticking this thing is not going to be easy. When it hits obstacles, it just flexes and crawls over them. Wet rocks? Piece of cake. Deep water, it just floats across and crawls up the other side. This is what separates this type of ATV from the typical quad or gator. With the eight wheel drive and the articulating body, the SureTrek will handle ledges and overhangs like any good ATV should. The only real limiting factor here is the steering because when things get bumpy, well, you never quite know where this thing's gonna go but it usually involves a tree. But the real test came in the form of sticky, gooey, river bottom mud, the kind that's deep and nasty enough to stick anything, except a SureTrek. The fiberglass body just floated on top, and those gnarly vampires just kept digging away. Once again, there are very few ATVs that can pull something like this off. At this point, it looked like the only way to stop this rig was to try and wedge it in somewhere. So that's what I did. But with a quick shift to low range, the SureTrek just pulled its way out like a big snake, doing everything it could to keep those tires on the ground. <laughs> now you got to admit that this thing is cool. I mean, look what we did with it. We went in the mud, we went in the rocks, we climbed hills, we went in the lake. I mean, all with a vehicle that we don't have hardly any money in. Now, the good thing about a project like this is look at what you learn. I mean, we did some engine retrofitting, we did some fiberglass work, we did electrical, we did some mechanical work. I mean, you learn everything. The truth of the matter is, you can't do a big project like a copperhead or a crazy horse or a sergeant rock until you can do something like this first. So get out there, get something and start working on it. You're missing all the fun. Ah.